Uh, yeah, first of all, apologize because it's not finished. This is going to be a chapter of my thesis, but now it's just a skeleton. Uh, I promised myself that it was going to be finished, but it's not finished. Uh, my thesis is about um, metal work in the view of SK, very traditional. I'm trying to make a, a database and trying to find patterns in time and space. But at some moment when I was working uh, about this, with this, uh, some people started to, to tell me, you know, like, so you, you are telling me that people were going from Brittany to Galicia in the, in the Bronze Age just to, to get some metal work and you're assuming that because you have only some similarities. Uh, that's very dangerous, that's very complicated and they didn't, yeah, they really didn't, people didn't believe me that, you know, people were doing that just based in, in metal work. So that's why I, I decided to, to write this, this chapter about mobility in, in this period of time in the view of this case. And, and I realized that by doing that, I was going also to see how easy or difficult it is to move through the space and patterns in the metal work were going to become more, more clear. Um, so what I've decided to do is to, to focus in, in, in these three things. And when I started to do this, I realized that uh, in fact are things that do not only affect people in the Bronze Age, but are affecting people in many different periods. Um, in other words, you know, the routes people follow, winds, currents, the boats, they are used for long periods of time, longer than the Bronze Age. So what I decided is to, to focus on how they change through time, uh, find patterns there in that chapter, and then apply that to my, to my database. M but my problem was, uh, okay, so what have in common people traveling at different periods of time? Uh, they have different ideologies, different economical systems, and that's when uh, Brodel came very, very handy. Uh, so what I'm doing is considering these two things as structures, uh, the boats, the physical geography, the routes, um, that change through time very slowly. They overlap, you know, uh, archaeological traditional periods like Iron Age, Bronze Age, uh, but they are they are there and and and, and, they, and they, they change. So so my my plan is to to see how these two things change in the view of SK through time and how they interact with each other and how people from different periods, travelers from different uh, chronologies are connected through through them. I'm going to start with the physical geography, then the roots, and then the, finally the, the boats, and at the end the, the conclusions. So the coastlines. Uh, this is a complicated issue, uh, very complicated, really. Uh, at first I thought it was going to be very straightforward, but no, because when things change in an area, uh, there are also local changes that are not the same in the entire region. So I don't know if, if in some place, you know, for some reason, the sea level goes down in in the next uh, place is going to go up for some other reason. So it's quite complicated, but lucky me, apparently, from regional studies and local studies of the Via Biscay, after the sixth, uh, after the sixth millennia BC, fourth millennia BC, uh, things have been quite steady. And apparently, things has changed in certain places like Brest and the Basque Country. Apparently, things have have changed more in the last 200 years than in the last 3,000 um, years. Uh, uh, about winds and currents, I'm assuming that they were the same in, in the past. Um, I'm using the, the, the guidance uh, offered by the Admiralty. And in general, the currents of the Via Biscay can be classified in, in three, three groups. Um, can you see the yellow? Oh, okay, I can get it here. Okay, so uh, here, um, in the summer, currents go to the south, okay? While in the winter, they throw you to the coast, and it's quite difficult, apparently, to, to, to sail there in the winter. However, uh, the, the currents uh, are very easy to, to sail uh, here during the winter, because they, 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 they take you all the way parallel to the coast until the Giron here, following the, the North Galicia, and the Cantabrian coast. And apparently this, this region is quite very easy to, to sail in any of the periods. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I hope you are, I don't get these words. Uh, yeah, during, during, the, the, during the, the summer, apparently, contrary, uh, this coast north of Spain is quite difficult to sail. So you have all these different combinations. And, and I hope that, that those are going to be useful when trying to understand the distribution of, of artifacts. 
uh, about the, the coastlines very quickly in Galicia here uh, these two rivers is very accessible places these other two regions here the Cantabrian coast Brittany they are not not they are not bad but the only a few places are good to, to access them and finally you have this coast here to the south of France which is horrible it's very difficult to, to access it and, and through history you see that people don't like this place they, <laughs> you, you don't see artifacts or, 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 or anything here from what I've seen certainly not in, in the Bronze Age um, sea routes uh, so what I'm trying to, to do now is to take things uh, little things and try to, to see how people uh, moved through the Bay of Biscay. So in the Neolithic, uh, well, we've already talked about the, the axis. Uh, it seems that uh, this jade axis have a certain Atlantic distribution. Um, and also, uh, I'm trying, uh, it's, it's quite, I know it's a big issue, but I, I'm trying to work with uh, the, the old issue of the passage graves and the decorations in, in these passage graves and, and how it seems that uh, they, they, they are connected um, crossing the Bay of Biscay and not going through the, 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 the inner regions. So it seems that in the living from what I'm seeing, um, people were, were going uh, following this way, not this other way around. Um, sorry if I'm going very, very quickly. In the case of the, of the uh, Calcolithic, I decided to do this using the Belphic Pottery. Uh, there is a really nice uh, paper uh, comparing uh, uh, the, the Belvique pottery in Galicia and Brittany, and I knew I cannot compete with that, so I decided to to just do numbers. And, and I've been trying to make uh, very very simple uh, numbers. And what you see here is that as you go to the inner regions of the Bay of Biscay, uh, Belvique pottery is scarcer and uh, scarcer, and suddenly you have these two very big. Uh, uh, or links or, or points. Uh, so some people just say that you know that you have this distribution that the Fabrica comes this way through the here the the Caron. But if that was the case, I, I assume that you should have like huge amounts of Fabrica pottery here as you have it here and here. But that's not the case. Uh, so again, I think there is there is room to think that people were you know following this 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 route. Uh, now we arrive to the to the Bronze Age very quickly with. What I have in the early Bronze Age, uh, again, uh, this is going to change. But uh, again, I have these two big—I um, uh, don't know how to call it—humongous bunches of things here and here. Clusters. Clusters, yeah. <laughs> um, different, different stuff. Uh, some of them, uh, yeah, like the, uh, the gold collars or the carantillas, the lunar light. Uh, well, they are, are found here. While in these regions now. It seems they are more more peripheric. Um, that in the case, for example, of the the halbiers, the bronze age halbiers, they, they have a more the, the blue uh, stars. They have a more uh, a different uh, distribution. But in general, you have these two powerful points. Britain is much more powerful, but you, you have these two. Um, this is going to change in the middle bronze age. Uh, this is just the distribution of of axes. And and in the case of the uh, the, the, here, the, the metoc, yeah. And now in the Middle Bronze Age, it seems to, to become a, a, a very powerful point. You can see it here in the yeah. Uh, while um, uh, the pulse staves that are, are are in Brittany are um, so uh, okay. Very quickly, yeah. Uh, it, it seems, uh, and now we can discuss later about this. It seems that Galicia is. <laughs> Coming and the Western Navy in general, uh, more peripheric, uh, and Brittany and the Giron are more connected. And, and I think that only by looking to the distribution of axes and, and the numbers, it it, it, it <coughs> makes sense. Late Bronze Age, uh, I'm still working in this part of the database. I just showing you a very traditional uh, part: distribution of cold rooms and flesh hooks, and and I. I like to think, and I, I, I know I shouldn't have any, any biases because I haven't started working with this, but I have the feeling that uh, in this period what you have is that both Northwestern Iberia, that route that we've seen before, and the new route of the of the Giron are, are active, both of them at the same time. Um, then we arrive to the to the 
Iron Age, uh, traditionally, uh, and I accept that. It has been said that with the arrival of the Phoenicians to the Iberian Peninsula, the Iberian Peninsula was kind of uh, absorbed by the Mediterranean, while the North Atlantic area entered in, with, uh, in contact with Central Europe. And it has been said that the good Lincoln swords, uh, the dis distribution in both in, in the British Islands and Central Europe is, is uh, a proof of that. Um, in any case, you still have the 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 hill fort, uh, the, this particular very very similar distribution of settlements in the Iron Age, uh, and also you have I, I didn't know about this until until very recently. <coughs> I, I don't know how to take it, but you have this this distribution of gold gold dorks, which seems that is well is well denying that view of the Atlantic uh, Iron Age, and. So the Iron Age, I don't know how to, to understand it yet, really. You have some people saying some things, and you have people saying that, you know, maybe it's not like that uh, entirely. Uh, when we arrive to the, to the Roman period, um, during the Republic, uh, the, the, the Iberian Peninsula was conquered, with the exception that was conquered uh, very, very, very late, in the, at the end of the first century BC, the Cantabrian region. Uh, of course, also you know the, the goal was was conquered. So you have this period in the Republic when the, the Cantabrian, um, the north of Iberia is not controlled, and apparently that uh, that's what people uh, says. You know, the classicists to study this, this part that can be seen in the Dressel one uh, distribution. Is this very? Um, I don't know. It's like a, the king of the amphora of this period. Uh, it's distributed all all over um, the Roman territories, but apparently. Uh, it arrives to Galicia here, and it doesn't continue to to Brittany, and certainly in the Cantabrian region is is is, is not there. So it seems that in, in this period of time, that the Romans are contacted, uh, are, are going through the Bay of Biscay, um, through these north sections through the Caron, but are not following the uh, this, this this route. Okay, okay. Uh, in the during the empire, this apparently this this, this change, you have the building of lighthouses. Um, uh, in the white, you can see um, evidence, archaeological and written, of, of harbors. Uh, we have uh, in the Vetica, uh, there is the production of these two types of amphorae. They arrived to, to Brittany, and apparently they were taken because there are, there are shipwrecks um, through the Atlantic route. So we have, again, this route open. Of course, this is working again all the time. Uh, in the Byzantine period, again, choosing this, 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 uh, these pieces, uh, there are uh, well different amphora that seem to support uh, this one that you know people were traveling through crossing the, the Bay of Biscay, and in this case apparently they were going through the Gulf to to Brittany. This other type of of amphora. Uh, I'm going to skip the Vikings, okay? <laughs> and, uh, okay, and this only yeah, very interesting. Cannot do that. <laughs> very interesting. Uh, Camino de Santiago, yeah. Uh, uh, we know there was the, the English route went directly from from England. They they jumped to to Galicia. Uh, we don't know how they, they they got back because that's the that's the tricky thing. But we know that they were doing that. Uh, and finally, yeah, the, the boats. Uh, I'm going to talk only about the prehistoric boats. Uh, I have I've been able to find these log boats in these areas here. This is rock art depicting boats, and this is evidence that we have of seam plank boats only in England, of course. And, and my point here, and that's what I want to say, is that, well, I've been saying that people have been traveling through the Bay of Biscay, and yeah, I think that's, that's quite clear. But it, it seems that people in the Neolithic were not more, more, not more constrained than in other periods of history. And people usually think, you know, like, um, that boats in prehistory are very bad, and boats in historical times are very good. And what I'm seeing is that, and that's, I, I agree with that to the conclusions, is that if you look to the long history of boats, it doesn't seem that people in prehistory were more constrained by them, by their, I don't know, primitive design than in historical times, if you look to, to the routes. Um, sorry, I skipped this. If you look to the long-term uh, history of the routes, uh, there are kind of three different uh, routes that are going through cycles. Sometimes one are chosen, sometimes others are, are chosen. Um, and it seems due to maybe it's due to environmental changes, maybe it's due to political uh, situations. But certainly you have this kind of group of of, of movements, 
And finally, about the, the long-term history of the physical features of the day, it seems that they don't change that much since the Neolithic, and that's why I, I started working with the Neolithic. Uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you.